everyone! Welcome back to IntegralCalc.com. We're going to be doing a Lagrange multiplier problem today. This one, the equation they give us is f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. And the constraint equation that they give us is 2x plus 6y equals 2,000. And they ask us to use Lagrange multipliers to find uh, maximum or minimum points, if any, of this function subject to this constraint equation. So uh, a lot of steps to this problem, but we're just going to go through them one by one. None of them are too challenging. There's just a lot of things to have to remember in order. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, go ahead and convert this equation so that it is in the same form as this equation up here. And the way that we're going to do that is by setting this equation, um, we want to set it equal to zero. In other words, we want to get everything on one side instead of, you know, we've got 2x plus 6y on one side and 2,000 on another side. So we're going to go ahead and change it to be um, g of xy equals 2x plus 6y minus 2,000. So all we did was we subtracted 2,000 from both sides, so it moved over here and everything was on one side. And we can just call this g of xy. Uh, it's very common to use f as the, um, as the primary function and then g as the, the constraint equation, and obviously g is in, you know, with respect to x and y here, which are both in the equation. So now we have two functions that are in the same form, f of xy, g of xy, and then the equation here. Um, so what we want to do now that we've got both equations in this form is take the first order partial derivatives with respect uh, of both of these equations with respect to x and y. So what that looks like here is um, the partial derivative of f um, with respect to x and um, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, um, and then we'll do the partial derivative of uh, g with respect to x, and the partial derivative of g with respect to y. So let's go ahead and take uh, this first partial derivative here. It's going to be of this function here, because it's with f, and then with respect to x. And if you um, if you're not familiar with partial derivatives, please go and check out the partial derivatives section of my website where you can find a bunch of videos explaining that concept. We're going to go through it here a little bit more quickly, uh, assuming that you have um, a knowledge of, of how to take partial derivatives. So in this case, our partial derivative with respect to x at this function, um, the y is going to go away because we hold it constant and it ends up being a constant number. And so the partial derivative of this x squared here is just 2x. Same thing here, partial derivative of this function, but with respect to y, the x squared is going to cancel because it, it's treated as a constant, so it just becomes a number like 4 or 5, it goes away, and we just have to worry about the y squared, and of course the derivative of y squared is just 2y. So we have 2y. Now um, we're going to be taking partial derivatives of this function here, g of xy, um, first with respect to x. So here, um, the 2,000 is going to cancel because whenever we take any derivative, if we have a constant like this, 2,000, just the number, it becomes zero, so it cancels. Um, and with respect to x, the 6y is also going to cancel because the y is treated as a constant, and this becomes a number just like 2,000. So it goes away, and we only have to worry about the 2x. And the derivative of 2x, of course, is just 2. And now here, um, the partial derivative of g of xy with respect to y, uh, again, the 2,000 is going to cancel because it's a constant. The 2x will cancel as well because we're holding x constant to take the partial derivative with respect to y. And this will become uh, a constant number, just like 2,000. So it will become 0 as well. And then if, uh, we're left with 6y, the derivative of which is just 6. So um, again, just to recap really quickly, 
we transformed the constraint equation into a form um, identical to the uh, original function here, everything on one side of the equation, and then we took partial derivatives with respect to x and y of both functions. Now that we have that, um, we want to do the following. Go ahead and add, um, I think this Greek symbol is called lambda. I can't remember now off the top of my head. But it, this is always the symbol we use when we're dealing with Lagrange multipliers. You go ahead and add that um, to the end of the partial derivatives with respect to x. And actually what we're going to do here, now we can take the, uh, the partial derivative um, signs away. Um, we add this symbol and then um, we set these equal to each other. So, you know, this was the, the partial derivative with respect to x of f and g, and with respect to y of f and g, and we add this lambda symbol and then set them equal to each other. And the reason that we do that is because we want to be able to solve for lambda, these two systems of equations. So, as you can see, if we simplify this first equation, right, we'll get, we divide both sides by 2, and they cancel, so we get x equals lambda. Um, we can also divide this equation, both sides by 2. The 2 will cancel over here and we'll be left with y equals 3 lambda. So now you can see we can actually substitute x for lambda down here and we'll get y equals 3x, right? Because if x equals lambda, we can plug in x here and we get y equals 3x. So the whole reason that we did this was so that we could find this relationship here between um, y and x. And we're actually going to need this later. So I'm going to go ahead and write it um, up here so that I can erase this part and we, we, um, we don't forget that. So the next thing that we want to do, um, now that we have this, we want to use the... Um, the constraint equation, this 2x plus 6y equals 2,000, and we want to plug back in for one of these so we can simplify this to two variables. So I'm actually going to go ahead, since we've solved for y here, I'm going to plug in 3x for y into this, and I'll get 2x plus 6, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in 3x for y equals 2,000. And now I'm going to solve for x. So I have 2x plus 18x equals 2,000, which gives me 20x, 2,000, which gives me x equals 100. So um, we've solved for x. Now, if we use this uh, relationship here, if x is 100, then y, y equals 3, we go ahead and plug 100 in for x up here. 3 times 100. So y is equal to 300. So our, our point um, is actually going to be 100, 300. In other words, our x, y coordinates, x, y, our point is um, at 100 x and, and 300 y. So the reason that, um, that we did all of these steps was so that we could get to this point um, because we're trying to look for either a local minimum or a local maximum. And this is going to be the point at which the local minimum or the local maximum exists. But now what we need to determine is whether this is a max or a min because we don't, we don't know. We know it's one of those, but we don't know which one. So let's go ahead and write up here our point so we have it and I can erase the bottom. 100, 300. Let's get rid of all of this. 